Hi, I'm Bob. I hope you are doing well today. Let's finish the second part of the problem set for Chapter Seven: Multiple Regression Analysis with Qualitative Information in the Textbook Introductory Econometrics, the Seventh Edition. For problem number seven, we can write down the original population equation and replace. In the labor force, with one minus out of the labor force. Rearranging the terms, we have the new equation. We find that. The intercept becomes one minus beta zero. The slope coefficients take the opposite sign of the old ones. The standard errors are unchanged. Recall the formula for the standard error of beta j hat. Nothing changes in the formula. Because the information used in the models is the same, or we can use the property of the variance to see that the new estimates have the same variance as the old estimates, so the standard errors should be the same. In part three, the R squared is unchanged because the sum of squared residuals (SSR) and the total sum of residuals (SST). Do not change. We can verify the above conclusions by comparing the estimated equations in stata. Let's go to problem number eight. We can write the log of wage as a linear function of marijuana usage, education, experience, and gender. Experience has been entered as a quadratic to allow a diminishing effect of experience on wage, and a turning point. The key variable, marijuana, is the number of times smoked marijuana last month. Smoking marijuana five times per month is estimated to change wages by 100 times five times beta one hat percent. For the second question. We can add the interaction between female and marijuana to the model. The calculus shows that the partial effect of marijuana usage on wage depends on gender. It is the sum of beta one and beta three for females, and it is beta one for males. The null hypothesis that there were no differences in the effects of drug usage for men and women is. Beta three equals zero. The alternative hypothesis is that beta three does not equal zero. For part three, we divide people into four groups: lung users, light users, moderate users, and heavy users. We add three dummy variables to the model with an overall intercept. We treat the lung users as the base group. The dummy variable for light users is light. We define it equals one if the user smokes one to five times per month, and it equals zero otherwise. We define the other two dummy variables the same way. The model is as follows. The parameters beta one, beta two, and beta three. Measure the difference in log wage between the corresponding group and the base group. In part four, the null hypothesis that marijuana usage has no effect on wage is that beta one equals zero, beta two equals zero, and beta three equals zero. The alternative hypothesis is that 
at least one of beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 is not zero. The number of restrictions is 3, so in the F statistic formula, Q is 3. And the degree of freedom in the unrestricted model is the sample size minus the number of estimates, N minus 8. For the last part, the use of marijuana is people's choice, and it depends on many factors not included in the model. Marijuana usage might be correlated with factors such as health, region, age, and family background affecting wages. If these factors are systematically different across different groups of people, omitting them leads to the omitted variable bias of the OLS estimates. Let's find answers to problem number 9. The outcome variable y is a linear function of d and z, where d is a dummy variable and z is a quantitative variable. When d equals 0, fz equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times z. When d equals 1, fz equals beta 0 plus delta 0 plus beta 1 plus delta 1 times z. The two lines intersect at the point that satisfies the equation. We can solve it and z star equals minus delta 0 over delta 1. If and only if delta 0 and delta 1 have opposite size, z star is positive. As shown in the left graph, if a line starts lower than the other line, it has to be steeper than the other to intersect it. Delta 0 and delta 1 have opposite size. It is true in the right graph too. In part 3, we can derive the intersection point from the beginning or use the result from the last part. The value of total college credit is 11.9 when the predicted wages are the same for men and women. The answer to the last question is no. The range of total college is from 0 to 10.1 in the sample, with a mean of 2.27. Let's do problem 10. The answer to the first question is yes. In the simple regression, the zero conditional mean assumption is satisfied because participation is completely randomized in the sense that it is independent of both observed and unobserved factors that can affect the test score. So the OLS estimate beta 1 hat is unbiased for the program effect on the score. Since the OLS estimate from the simple regression is unbiased, there's no need to add the control variables. It will not affect the estimate, but including them could reduce the estimate's standard error and narrow the confidence interval. Adding additional background information will not induce multicollinearity because the participation is random, but it reduces the error variance. It results in a more precise estimate of the program's effect on the score. In the situation when they have no effect on the score and therefore will not reduce error variance, we should not include them, but it is not likely to happen. So in research, we should always include the background variables in the model. Let's solve problem 11. In the second equation, the coefficient on male is the difference in score between male and female students holding college GPA fixed. Male students have 3.83 more points than female students on average. We compute the 95% confidence interval using the formula. It is from 2.37 to 5.28. It excludes zero. Or we can read the 95% confidence interval from the stator result window. In the third equation, 
the imprecise coefficient on the variable male is a consequence of the high multicollinearity between male and the interaction term male times college GPA. The multicollinearity makes the standard error for the variable male large. Another reason is that the estimate and standard error are at the point college GPA is zero, which is outside the range of the sample. But to test whether there were no gender differences in the score, we should conduct the F-test. The null hypothesis is that both the coefficients on the variable male and the interaction term are zero. We could use the F-statistic formula to compute it. The number of restrictions is two. The degree of freedom in the unrestricted model is the sample size minus the number of estimates. That is, 852. The unrestricted model is the SIR equation. Its R squared is 0 0.349. The restricted model is the first equation because the restriction is the two coefficients are zero. Its R squared is 0 0.329. Plug in the values and we obtain the F statistic of 13.1 and its p-value of zero to three decimal places. We reject the null hypothesis, and we conclude that there is a gender difference in the score after controlling for college GPA. For the last question, we can write the partial effect formula from the fourth equation, and find that beta 1 hat is the difference in the score between male and female students at the average college GPA. In other words, it is the partial effect at the mean, or an approximate average partial effect. At this point, the estimate and the standard error are close to equation 2. By contrast, in equation 3, the coefficient on male is the score difference at zero college GPA. That is why the estimate is smaller in the third equation. Let's solve problem 12. In equation 7.19, the coefficient on black is minus 0 0.198. It implies that if a black player is in a city with no blacks, then the black player earns about 19.8% less than a comparable white player. Here, the coefficient on black is 0 0.008. It implies that if a black player is in a city with 16.55% blacks, then the black player earns about 0.8% more than a comparable white player. It is the partial effect of black on salary, or the difference in salary between black and white players at the sample mean. Similarly, Hispanic players earn about 2.77% more than white players in the city of 10.82% Hispanics. The effects are not statistically significant. For the second question, we conclude that there's no statistically significant difference in salary between black, Hispanic, and white players on average after controlling for the other variables in the model. For the last question, we can prove that only the coefficients on the dummy variables change. Equation 1 contains the interaction term between x1 and x2, while equation 2 contains the interaction term between x1 and the mean x2. Comparing 1 and 2, we find that 
only the coefficient on x1 changes. In this question, only the coefficients on black and Hispanic change. The coefficients on the intercept, other variables, and the interaction terms are unchanged. Since the information used in the two models is the same, standard errors, the R-squared and the adjusted R-squared are the same. We can verify it by estimating the models in stata. We use the estimate store command to save the result of each model and then use the stab command to compare them. Let's complete the last problem. We could not compute the sample average treatment effect, state, because we can observe only one state of the world for each unit i, either yi0 or yi1, but not both. We cannot compute y0 bar and y1 bar because we cannot observe both outcomes for each unit. For part two, suppose we observe yi0 for n1 units and yi1 for n2 units. y0 bar is the mean of the n1 observations, and y1 bar is the mean of the n2 observations. If we use y1 bar minus y0 bar to compute the sample error treatment effect, there will be a bias. Thank you for solving the problems with me. See you in the computer exercises soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.